sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Click on the link in the description to get 83% off and one month extra for free. Thermostats used to just control the temperature of our house, but smart thermostats can do so much more. They know so much more about us. For me? They've learned what we like. You're awesome. Man. They anticipate our needs. And they can help us save energy and money. Okay, maybe they're not that integrated into our lives yet, but after living with an EKB for the past four years, I've gotten to know the good and the bad of what they can offer. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. I don't know how many of you remember the old school round thermostats that you had to adjust on your own. My grandparents had one of those for basically forever. And I never understood why they didn't replace it with a programmable one. As big of an upgrade as a programmable thermostat is over the old school thermostats, a smart thermostat is another step beyond that. And whether you're concerned about sustainability, saving money, or both, getting a handle on heating and cooling your home is the best place to start, since it accounts for about half of our energy use every year. The simple act of turning down your temperature by 7 to 10 degrees for 8 hours a day can save 10% of energy costs over the course of a year. Sadly, most people don't set their thermostats properly or just leave them at a set temperature all the time. And that's where smart thermostats come in. They can help take care of those temperature adjustments for you automatically and do it on the fly based on what's happening in your house. The two big names in smart thermostats are Nest and Ecobee. Something like Nest uses machine learning to find patterns in how you like to heat and cool your home over time. It's kind of like having a virtual butler that starts to adjust to patterns and anticipate what you need and when. And it can also understand when you're not home and dial things back automatically. But one of Ecobee's features that give it an edge are the included remote sensors. My house has a problem that I'm sure all of you experience too. The temperature can vary wildly depending on which room you're in. My basement runs cooler than the rest of the house. Our living room gets incredibly warm in the middle of the day from the sun, and my office just tends to run cool most of the time. Having remote temperature sensors in different locations from the main thermostat allows the Ecobee to take an average reading from the entire house. But the sensors also include motion sensors, so Ecobee can know which rooms are occupied and which ones aren't. If a room is unoccupied for a certain period of time, it will ignore and remove that room from the average temperature reading of the house. This, in theory, means that it will be adjusting your home to make sure that the occupied rooms are more comfortable, even if it means the unoccupied rooms get a little bit too warm or too cold. The motion sensors also allow EKB to know if the house is empty or not, and if it is, it can automatically flip into away mode and dial back temperatures to save energy and money. Not too long ago, Nest released remote temperature sensors for their system, but it's a very limited implementation compared to EKB. They aren't included with the thermostat from the start, they only provide temperature information and don't include motion detection, and you have to manually target which room's temperature reading you want to use for controlling the entire system at different times of the day. It doesn't average anything out or take care of itself. However, when setting up the Ecobee, you can take a hands-off approach. Set your comfort settings and let the system take care of the rest. Setting up the comfort settings is actually pretty easy. By default, the system has three settings, home, away, and sleep. All you're doing is selecting your desired temperature and fan settings for each one, and you can add more comfort settings if you want, but I found the default three to be plenty. And one important note is that you can also assign specific temperature sensors to each comfort setting. A good example would be to select just the bedroom sensors for the sleep setting. That ensures that only the bedroom sensors will be used to calculate the house's average temperature at night when you're in bed. The next step is adjusting the default schedule, which is really just assigning one of those comfort settings for each different time period block throughout the day and the week. By default, it will have a home and sleep time block configured for the most common time frames throughout the week, but you can easily add more time blocks or adjust the ones that are there. Since the system can automatically understand if the house is empty or not, you can let it decide on its own when to flip into the away comfort setting. All you need to do is set home and sleep. Otherwise, you can add away or other custom comfort settings to the schedule to take more manual control. You can step things up a notch by enabling geofencing in the mobile app on your phone. And depending if you leave or enter the geofenced area around your house, the system will automatically put the house into away or home mode. 
This method is faster at switching your system into away mode since it's not relying solely on the motion sensors in your home. It can take up to two hours of no motion before the system flips into away mode, where using geofencing on your phone will be instant. The final feature set that's worth noting before I get to the pros and cons is Home IQ. This will show you detailed reports for your equipment runtime, see exactly how often the fan was running or when the system was actively heating and cooling. You also see what the calculated average temperature was throughout the day, as well as what the outside temperature was. This helps to show how the outside temperature is affecting your system's performance. You can also see when the system was detecting motion throughout the day. You may be able to spot patterns for what rooms were occupied and which ones were empty throughout the day and the week, and use that to create more customized comfort settings and schedules. And if you're a data nerd, you can download all of this data as a CSV file, so slice and dice it any way you like. But probably my favorite part is that the system also provides some context around all of this data by showing how your home compares to other Ecobee users in your area, as well as how much energy and money it saved you. The community comparison can be extremely helpful to get a sense for how your temperature settings differ from everybody else's, which also highlights how changing your settings may improve your results. The system also shows you how well your home retains its thermal energy compared to others in your area. This extra context can help you know if you need to look into improving your weather ceiling for your home. So how has the Ecobee worked out over the past four years? Well, here are the pros. The system has been rock solid. Over the four years, I've never experienced an outage on the Ecobee internet connectivity. And even if I did, the system continues operating locally just fine. The sensors throughout my house and the averaging of the temperature has absolutely helped in making our house more comfortable. It doesn't solve the temperature variations, but it helps to dial in the temperature for the rooms that are occupied. And it doesn't matter if the basement runs a little cold if there's nobody down there. But for me, the biggest benefit of the Ecobee system is Home IQ. I've used the data and reports to better understand how the choices I'm making are impacting the system's performance. And it's tapping right into that gamer in me. I want to try to get a higher score than my neighbors. And I want to be one of the top tier homes for my area. And because they provide all of the data and the context around it, it makes it easy to understand what I have to do to try to make my settings better. I dropped the temperature settings by a couple of degrees over the winter and saw our ranking jump up. But what about the cons? Ecobee claims that these old style remote sensors that I use will have batteries that will last for about two years. But what I've found is that I have to replace them about every year to year and a half. While that's not horrible, it's a far cry from what they've claimed. One of the biggest selling points of the system is the averaging of the temperature readings from the included sensors. And while it definitely works, it's not without its quirks. I didn't mean to make a rhyme there. First is the delay built into the system with the motion detection. It errs on the side of caution because it doesn't want to discount a room that people may be in, but are just very still. This can be frustrating because you might be spending more of your evening in the living room watching TV, but you walk through the kitchen to go to the bathroom. And even though you're in the kitchen for less than a minute, it now registers that room as occupied for quite some time before flipping back to unoccupied. When the house is in sleep mode, it ignores the lack of motion to avoid putting the house into away mode. As I mentioned before, it takes up to two hours of house inactivity before it flips into away mode automatically. So as nice of a feature as motion detection is on those thermostats, it's not something you can rely on completely due to those built-in delays. The result is a household average temperature that might include unoccupied rooms, which negates some of the benefits of the system. Now, while that may sound bad, it's solvable with a few adjustments to the system. But before I get to those adjustments, I'd like to thank Surfshark for sponsoring this video. I've spent my fair share of time using free Wi-Fi in airports, coffee shops, and hotels. And whenever I do, I always use a VPN to protect my data. Free Wi-Fi may be free, but it's not secure. Surfshark encrypts all of the data that you send over the internet, so your private data like passwords, messages, photos, videos, and whatever you're doing online stays private. You can change your country location, which can unblock content, and Surfshark also provides more protection with CleanWeb, which blocks ads, trackers, and malicious websites. One of the best parts of Surfshark is it's easy to set up on all of your devices, whether that's iPhone or Android, Mac or PC. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use with an unlimited number of devices. Use my code to get 83% off plus one extra month for free. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. Link in the description below, and thanks to Surfshark and to all of you for supporting the channel. Now, some of those cons I brought up can be minimized if you customize which sensors are in use for specific comfort settings. 
You can avoid the unoccupied rooms from getting included in the average temperature. For instance, you could create an evening comfort setting and add a schedule for it between 7 p.m. and bedtime. If you exclude the kitchen from that setting, then when you take a bathroom break from watching Tiger King in the living room, you don't have to worry about the kitchen looking occupied to the system as you pass through it. I'd also recommend activating geofencing. This will put the house into away mode as soon as you actually leave, instead of two hours later. The one downside is that it only works for one person's phone. You can get around this limitation by using the IFTTT and Life360 apps on multiple phones, and if you're an all-iPhone household, you can use Apple HomeKit to solve it. I'll include some links in the description for how to set those up, but in my case, I'm using Hubitat as the central system for my smart home, which tracks all of our different phones and flips the house and Ecobee into home or away modes. Do I recommend Ecobee? Absolutely. Do I recommend smart thermostats in general? 100% yes. None of us live according to a pre-programmed schedule, so systems like these can adjust on the fly. And when it comes to Ecobee, it also shows you through Home IQ how you can make improvements to help your situation. It's those micro adjustments and educational screens that can help you make behavioral adjustments that add up to significant savings over time. My Ecobee may not be my AI best friend, <laughs> but it's definitely made my home more comfortable and efficient over time. And if you like this video and you wanna take your smart thermostat to the next level, check out my Hubitat Elevation Smart Hub review video. You can tie the Ecobee into your broader smart home and get even more efficiencies out of it. Now jump into the comments and let me know what you think. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.